32 minutes, and they're through to a fourth final. Yang Nan and Xiao Yunlei, last year's champions, Mr. and Mrs. Adcock, are defeated in the semi final stage. So the next of our semi-finals is women's doubles and there you can see we will be concentrating on the top half of uh, the draw but two Japanese pairs uh, three Chinese pairs at quarterfinal stage but let's make mention of uh, Muskins and Peak from the Netherlands getting through to their first ever Super Series quarterfinal yesterday obviously defeated by the number one seeds but my goodness, that is a step very much forward in their careers. So Matsutomo and Takahashi, the number one seeds, the world number ones, number ones on the Super Series standings up against the pair that beat them in the final of the Asian Games. Lydia Krishinda Mehiswari and Gracia Poli, the Indonesian pair in the black kit, the Japanese pair, Misaki Matsutomo and Ayaka Takahashi. It's an interesting match in, in many ways because um, the Japanese pair is a very, very steady pair and that's taking them to number one in the world. They haven't won that many tournaments, but they are a very steady pair. When you look at the uh, the Indonesians, I think they they have a more like a yo-yo career, if you can say that. They have very, very good results and sometimes they're not performing to expectations. So, But they have a very high level when they play at their best. And I, s I saw them in uh, in Taipei when they beat uh, the... Um, Wang Xiaoli and uh, Yang. Yeah, the best pair from, uh, from China. Yeah. Which was a very, very good performance when they did that in the final. It was very convincing in two games. Yeah. And so I so I they have a very high, high level when it they really hit the high note. But they don't always hit the high note. No. No. That's what I'm trying okay. to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you talk about consistency, and you're right. This pair, very, very consistent. Their win-loss record for the year, 42 and 10, translates into 14 tournaments, six finals, two titles, German Grand Prix gold, and the Japan Super Series, their first ever Super Series title in their fifth Super Series final. Well, there you can see that they had a walkover in the second round. And the quarterfinal against the Dutch pairing that I was telling you about. They were 110 down in that opening game. If you were with us yesterday, you would have enjoyed that. Fought all the way back before forcing extra points but then lost that opening game and then having won the second they were 16 love up in the third game 
which I think I mentioned on commentary. I don't think I've ever commentated on a, a match where we were in danger of being won and lost to love. But fortunately, that didn't happen. No. So there are uh, Gracia Polly, 27 years of age, born in Jakarta, but brought up in Manado, right in the north of North Sulawesi. Moved back to Jakarta when she was about eight. And her partner, Nithya Krasinda Veseswari, 25 years of age, so she'll turn 26 next month from Blitar in East Java. And of course, the Asian Games gold medal has got to be their biggest result, a most precious result so far, I would imagine. So there are court officials from Hong Kong and Mauritius. So umpire Daniel Law from Hong Kong calls for play to get underway. Oh. Now Morton, I can tell you that yesterday the Indonesians One, played against the number three seeds, uh, Reika Kiwa and Mayuki Maeda who had beaten them in the World Championships, a Japanese pair, of course, taking the bronze medal. And it was 21-15, 23-21, so two games, and it was an hour and 12 Love. minutes. I can <laughs> imagine had that had gone to three. <laughs> <laughs> we would have been sitting here watching them still. Yeah. yeah. So I think we could perhaps have... Uh, some long rallies here. Yeah. a chance for that to go out I think that's a very nice clear good clear oh that's called out but that was a very very good clear by Takahashi she saw that her opponent was moving forward and decided to play the clear and how unlucky she was thought we might have some long rallies. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> we're in for a long one here. The interesting part, you 
know, I know it's, it's very, very early stages. But as much as I, I love watching Gracia Poli play, I think she might be the one. I'm not saying she will, but I think she might be the one struggling with the kind of game here because she's so inventive in what she's doing that maybe, you know, she can't help herself now and again trying to take chances and she might be punished for that. So whether she can stay calm and cool and keep it going and not being too adventurous will uh, only remain to be seen. Oh, yes. yeah, they deserved it. Yeah. I really think the Japanese pair deserved to win that one. They pay, played the, the positive, the aggressive badminton, and eventually they got it down. present back support on Masuari. Oh. Yeah, good placement of the smash towards the right hip. Gracia Pori. Lovely story about her. Well, I suppose lovely is the wrong expression, but tragedy in her family when she was very young, two years old, she lost her father, and that's why she and her mother had to move to Monado in North Sulawesi. And when they moved back to Jakarta, her Six. mother had to sell clothes to really struggle financially. Did extra work to buy Gracia shoes and a racket so she could think continue playing badminton. And here she is, one of the best in the world. She must have a mighty proud mother right now. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure it's repaid a million times. Yeah. So it's over seven, six. I think the, the only way for this match really to light up, if you can say that, is to see that the Indonesians Gracia Puli and Maheswari are not getting away with playing too defensive. Yeah. That's what we saw in, in that really long rally. They lose it. Mm -hmm. If they play long rallies again and they keep losing them, means that they were forced out of their shell. Mm. And then I think the match can light up. But if they get away with playing defensive badminton and winning the rallies, we will not see this. Mm. Thank you. 
Well, unfortunately, neither you or I watched the Asian Games final, did we? Nope. Didn't get to see it, but it was 21-15, 21-9 in 46 minutes that the Indonesians won. Indonesians in the semi-final beat the world and Olympic champions Tianqing and Zhao Yunlei so it was quite clearly a, a wonderful wonderful tournament for them yeah lots of upsets in that uh, Asian Games because yeah. the Malaysian uh, women's doubles did pretty well as well yeah round of last 16 beat Wong Xiao Li and Yu Yang it's going wide yeah, but you see, this is this is much better. Mm. The Indonesians are not just sitting back and uh, waiting for things to happen, but uh, when they have the opportunity here, Puli went on on the attack and forced the error. You see, this is encouraging for the Japanese combination. Able to work hard, work on the attack, and win it. That matters. Yeah. Bad luck. Yeah, just wide. Over. Ten Takahashi is definitely uh, the most inventive of the two Japanese here. Her partner, Matsutomo, is, uh, is the safe player. She's actually a, a former singles player and managed sort of taking a lot of things from her singles into the doubles here and play very safe. But t to me, Takahashi is the more in inventive one of them and, and really plays some very, very good doubles strokes. So as we suspected, it will be very, very close. There's just one point in it. Morton, I want to pick up on that because that is to me very interesting of course Matsutomo as you say I mean she was silver medalist at the world junior championships in Guadalajara in 2010 yes but of the four players on court she is the only player that regularly plays mixed doubles now for you to point out <laughs> that she's the safe one because I always think in mixed doubles you need the woman to be adventurous yes. and really go for it at the net safe in the knowledge that mm. your stronger male partner is going to cover three corners of the court if you get out of balance or whatever yeah. and therefore you have that freedom to take yes. those chances and so on so hence why in my mind I'm just I don't disagree yeah, with you at all I, I, in fact I do agree with you but that it's a very good point you're driving yes it is why is she playing mixed why doubles why is she the one playing yeah. the mixed and yeah. not the others exactly So, I, I know you, you and I have discussed before, I think her playing 
mixed doubles has actually helped her women's doubles. It's, uh, it's getting her, her more adventurous and more creative. Yeah. Uh, we've seen her over the last 12 months or so really developing her game mm. in that aspect. So that's good for her. Yeah. And I would say that Grace Poli is playing mixed doubles now and again. Very occasionally. Yes, yeah, she's play, playing with a young Indonesian. And they actually managed to beat uh, Sao Yun Lei and Chang Nang in the first round of the Indonesian Open in June this year, didn't they? Kevin Sukul Jomo. Yeah, Kevin was the name. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, they had a major upset mm. in the Indonesian Open. That short. Slight confusion, who's supposed to be serving? Wants to test the new racket as well. Oh, that's way in. Yeah, that was a poor misjudgment. Mind you, I was saying yesterday, Morton, I think there's a bit of a sideways drift in this arena. Players, I think, uh, tend to be more used to the lengthways drift, don't they? They yes. tend to adapt more. Opportunity. She really worked it well. Mm. Maya Swari here. Great opportunity she created for herself. Good follow up here. points. Oh, she is lucky. But that's, that's actually what I was trying to say earlier when we talked about Gracia Pauli. That she's very adventurous and she plays really good badminton. But, you know, sometimes she's taking two great chances, and this was yeah. definitely one of them, and she got away with it because that defensive shot was going out in the sideline. But, yeah, but what, what a chance she took. Yeah, because there was a huge gap straight down the line, wasn't there? Yeah. And that's where she's losing her patience now and again. Mm. And I can see against the Japanese pair, who is very safe and keep it going and attacking them as at the same time, she kind of go a little bit wrong to say inverted commas mental you know I'm, yeah. I'm i got to create something and that's when she starts taking the big chances yeah she also left that one on the sideline as well just to mm. remind you on it so um, i think that was two signs of it i can tr relate to how <laughs> she feels on board that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh i didn't want to mention but uh, now you say it i know someone who felt a little bit like that yeah not mentioning any names, of course. No. Nope.
That's good defense. Yeah. Yeah, but I think she created it. Yeah. The way she sort of stepped into that one, she did well. Nice worry. That is something I would like to see more from the Japanese pair. I want them to be more aggressive on their service returns. Obviously not just in, in this match, but in general. You yeah. know, we, we watch them on the circuit, and that is definitely one of the areas where I think they can improve. Oh, she retreated very, very deep in court, Ayaka Takahashi. Just look where her feet end up. Look, back she goes. She's on that double service line. She's trying to defend that. Could be costly. Yeah, but she can't really complain. It can be costly, but you know, she had a lucky lucky one just previously, and you know, you you, you have to give and take a bit. You don't feel like that on court, though, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's all very well for us sitting here. Yeah, calm and collected. Yeah. <laughs> In the comfy seats. At the back of the arena here. It's so well to be ph philosophical about it, isn't yes, it? Yes, I know. <laughs> mm. Very often they have a clash of rackets in that center. Two Indonesians, and that's way in. Yeah. That's another sign. She is taking the chance in that one on the baseline. It's wrong to say it's nowhere near, but it's well in. Yeah. And, you know, you played, I played, everyone who has played, we would know when it's on its way to land, it's yeah. in. It's the chance that she's taking. Well, there's the opening game. 21-16 in favour of the number one pair in the world. Matsutomo and Takahashi. 23 minutes for that opening game. Which is actually not too bad, is it? No. No, I, I think we've seen, seen good badminton as well. Yeah, I was expecting a longer opening game than that, yeah. I have to say. I see that uh, the Indonesians is having uh, Eng Hyang as coach. Eng Hyang, yeah, indeed. 
He was a very, very good doubles player in his time. The best in the world, I think. Well, he was certainly the Olympic bronze medalist in Athens in 2004 with Flande Limpale. Okay, they got to that. Mm. But I'm, I'm sure he was uh, one in the world at, uh, at some stage. I can assure you there's some very good crowd in the Hong Kong Coliseum this afternoon. There's been good crowds all week, but it's such a huge arena, isn't <laughs> it? it is. That, you know, when we see <laughs> shots of the crowd, we think it's a little sparse. It's not at all. No, no but it is a big stadium. I don't know how many people it, it can hold, but uh, it's huge. Yeah. So one game to the good, number one seeds, 21-16 against the number seven seeds from Indonesia. So Matsutomo and Takahashi. And there they are against Koresia Poli and Nitya Krasinda Meswari. Again, there was the risky one. It if there'd been a straight <laughs> drive down the line there instead of and finding the net. Yeah, if that was gone, uh, had gone over, it would have been a winner. Yeah. She is a very risky player. She is risky, but you were saying earlier how much you enjoy watching I her. I do, I do, yeah. honestly I do. But I'm just looking at the circumstances of this match. It's a, it seems to be a slow haul. Mm -hmm. It seems perhaps a little bit slow shuttles. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get them down. You really have to work hard. And that's where she's sort of conflicting in her mm -hmm. mind, I think. Yeah. But it's, it's good that we've got her playing at all, really, because after the... Uh, well, incident at the London Olympic Games. You know, she did consider giving up Abington. In fact, I read a quote in one of the Asian newspapers after she'd won the Asian Games gold medal, and she said, after the Olympic tragedy, I almost gave up Abington. Yeah. And she w went on to say how it was all so worthwhile winning the Asian Games gold medal and coming back and putting that yeah, behind putting things, her. Uh, things yeah, things aside. Yeah. Well left, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> One of those tricky ones to leave. You can follow it all the way. And if you are right in saying that there's a drift as well, then it was going against the drift. Oh, missed it. Mm. 
little neck roll up. Five, four. But I take your point, Morton, because there was an example. Matsutomo intercepts nicely, but she just plays a little block. I know it was a perfect shot. It ended uh, up the uh, perfect shot. Absolutely, but, but she could have done so much more with it. Exactly. So much more. But she went for the safe option. She did. And I think that Polly is uh, maybe losing a little bit here. She's losing her patience, I think. Mm. Good play by Matsutomo here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And that was a nice smash from Takahashi across the body yeah, of she's Gracia Polly. She's got a little bit more power. Yeah. When she's hitting, she's her smash is perhaps the strongest of the four players on court. This is six straight points. From two four down. I was pointing out yesterday when we were watching the Japanese pair, Morton, how they've made a steady improvement over the years here at the Hong Kong Open. This is their fourth appearance. Three years ago, they lost in the last 16. Two years ago, in the quarterfinal. Last year, semi-final. So, always yeah, moving forward. Always yeah. moving forward. Yeah. And of course, you're always dependent on, on, on draws. draws. <laughs> <laughs> but it's and a little bit of good fortune now yeah. and again. But it's a nice statistic, isn't it, that it a pair is. keep improving and Absolutely. keep doing better. Absolutely. the mid-game interval yet, Morton, but I'm I'm very much sensing that the Japanese pair are really beginning to stamp their authority on this semi-final. Oh, it's called short. So it's over. Front. Yeah, it's hard to see from here. Yeah, we do have a a line judge on that front service line. Earlier in the week, it was the umpire who was making the call on the. No serves. Uh, that's nicely done. Good change of pace. And 11 6. The five point advantage is to the world number ones Matsutomo and Takahashi. Look at that. That's delightful. Well, I think you're right. The uh, momentum is swinging. A little bit towards the uh, Japanese pair, I think. Mm. Indonesia have to watch out. They have to step up, start to follow. Japanese teammates down here supporting. That's nice. Mm. Oh, Mr. Park Dupont sitting at the top right corner 
head coach of Japanese badminton. And what a difference he's made. Oh, how many years has he been there? Seven years? I, w I would have to guess, and I would guess at about seven, seven yeah. or eight years. Well, what a difference Huge. he has made. Mm. Lose four gold medals in singles in World Junior Championships since yeah. he's been there. Yep. Eight, and one we have to watch in the next match to come. Mm -hmm. Okuhara. doing my prep about this this matchup mm. I was really astonished to discover that the only previous time they had met was in the Asian Games final because they're both such good pairs I suppose the 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 reasoning for that is that the Indonesians only reformed their partnership they played together in 2008 but they only reformed their partnership at the Thailand Open last year as far as individual competition mm. is concerned. But, you know, with two pairs that are, are so... They're regular. Regular. I was very surprised by yeah. that. Yeah. But that's, you know, coming back to the point, what we discussed earlier, you know, these computer systems, they're juggling up the, uh, the draws and all that, but somehow have a tendency to, you know, people ending up in the same halves and possibly in the same quarters and so on. Mm. You see what happened last week and then this week some of them play second round yeah. once again yeah things like that so uh, it happens this is hugely important for the Indonesians to win yeah a big gulp of air for Gracia Poli was a glowing rally. What a delightful drop shot. Caught by the neck cord. Did yes. it get deflected on its way through? Yes, yes, it did. Yes, it did. Yeah. Came even shorter than anticipated. And here we've got Eng Hyang in the picture. Yeah, he was coaching for a while in Singapore, wasn't he? He was, yes. A very quiet man. Yeah. Doesn't say much. In fact, I think he spent some time in America as well, didn't he? Yeah, lots of the Indonesian players have spent time in America. Mm. With the, what is it called? Orange County, OCBC. Yeah. some confusion in the, in the center mm. between the two Indonesians. That's a, a wonderful backhand. My goodness me. Yeah, 
about what on earth was Matt Sutoma thinking about. He was weighing on that sideline. Matsutomo obviously wants the shuttle change. The umpire's saying, no, it's fine. She took the going cross court, falling out of court herself completely. <laughs> yeah, there's that same smash again from Takahashi. Across the body towards the forehand side of uh, Gracia Poli. Maheswari here. Very high when the. Very difficult to get back when this plays that high, chest height. And uh, Matsutomo really was forced to try to play a backhand from a very difficult. It was actually right shoulder and not just to the forehand side. Goodness me! Crikey! How on earth did she miss that? Ah, this is not the first time in history. Well played by Mahaswari here. <laughs> and look at the frustration. Just controlled her rage at herself in time. Yeah, very wisely, just. Uh, Taking a moment to <laughs> recompose. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. 
Safety again. Safety again, yes. Much better. Confusion once again. Oh. Oh. Yeah, well finished off. Well worked, Rally. But that finishing shot is really well played. This one here, cross. Yeah. Not an easy one to play. 18, 14. It's easy to sit and say from our position here, but I think Matsutoma did the right thing. And she is disgusted with herself that, you know, she was pushing it and the reply was hitting the top of the tape. But, you know, it could have been a winner. And she actually pushed for the winner, which I think was the right thing to do. But she might think it differently as, oh, I got yeah. punished by yeah. doing it. And yeah. that's what I don't want her to do have the faith to do it again. Yes. And the belief. Yeah. Well, two points away. The world number ones from a fifth Super Series final of the year. Five match point opportunities now for Matsutomo and Takahashi. Yeah, well played. Two games, 21-16, 21-15. And the number one seeds, uh, Misaki Matsutomo and Ayaka Takahashi, through to a fifth a Super Series tournament final of the year. A seventh final in total. Yep, Japanese teammates absolutely delighted. Won by Misaki Matsutomo. Ayaka Takahashi, 21-16, 21-15. 48 minutes needed for that victory. And revenge over the Indonesian pair. A reversal of the result in their only previous meeting in the final of the Asian Games. moment of victory and the big smiles for the Japanese players their confirmation 21-16 21-15 
So our next semi-final is...